sector of organism. If we looked at their divergence, how it evolved in evolution. So this is the sequence present soybean. Ravidopsis is a small tiny plant which, is, which belongs to brassica family, mustard family. And then you have rice, they are closely associated. Then this is spike moss, fungus, human, rat. They all contain this protein which, is, which makes sense because all these organisms, they require opening of DNA. So helicase protein should be present in all of them. But in the plants, it is very closely matching with each other, whereas human and rat was pretty diverse as compared to these ones. So future, what we want to do from this point? First thing we want to do is we want to study the mode of action. We know that this gene, if it is broken, it makes plants sterile. But now question is, how was this gene working? Why this plant becomes sterile? So what is wrong? Is there any problem with chromosomes, chromosome pairing, or something else? So that will be our next objective. Then also, we I gave you a list of several fertility genes. We'll just target those genes and try to identify those genes. Big objective, to explore the feasibility that if we can do out hybrid soybean, that is going to be huge. If we can show that hybrid soybean uh, can be produced and it is better than pure lines, so that is our long-term objective. So, and recently, um, as Alex mentioned, we recently got a grant from United Soybean Board uh, to clone genes based on this approach. So based on this uh, project, we submitted a grant to identify other soybean genes, isolating those, and we are going to be targeting some genes that are involved in yield and quality improvement in, in soybean. So at the end, I would like to thank funding sources, of course, UEI, UPDC, Student Research Fund, several of Student Research Funds, and then United Soybean Board for uh, their funding support, and then 13 undergraduate students who contributed towards this project, and several of those are in graduate schools now. Uh, uh, Becky, she's at Illinois, uh, Jordan, Alina, Iowa State University, Jay went to medical school, uh, then Ryan Frosch, he was in USDA, now he went to uh, Iowa Soybean Association, and uh, Sarah is in prevention genetics, and then uh, Chris and Alex. I still got these two. Alex is planning to graduate uh, next semester, and uh, she's planning to go to graduate school. And then also I would like to thank my collaborators, Dr. Reed Palmer and Dr. Madan Bhattacharya from Iowa State University. And at the end, I'm ready to take any questions. Audience, and then we'll sort of dismiss and people come up and chat with you. Sure. Yes. How is it the plants are able to grow without a helicase? Because you need a helicase for normal mitotic DNA replication. Is there another type of helicase? There are several different types of helicases. Uh, it's not one type. So there are specializations, some for replication, some for crossing over. So there are more than 130 helicases present in Arabidopsis. So now, actually, three uh, students, uh, Chris Navarro, uh, uh, Kel uh, Cl uh, Kellen uh, Kleinhans, and uh, Daniel Vaz, they are working on characterizing all the helicases present in soybean. Uh, so that will be really interesting, I think. Like they don't want them to be in there because they're jumping around. And how did they, they get introduced? Is it something that happened in evolution somewhere along the 
people think that uh, something like uh, virus invasion, so that's what happened. Uh, the transposable elements are some kind of evolution happening from uh, some external DNA. So most of those, they are inactive now, luckily. <laughs>